hello, and welcome back once again to Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror, the card game, with a focus on roleplay and storytelling, and on remembering my lines. I almost uh, forgot that one for some reason. It's not usually a thing that happens. Uh, welcome to another exciting episode of Doomed. Uh, we are continuing through the Dream Eaters. Today, Waking Side, Scenario 3B, Point of No Return, featuring... Tony Morgan, the bounty hunter. Uh, you know, thoughts, feelings about it so far? It's been good. It's been up and down. Uh, the dream side's been really uh, good. Some great victories. One close defeat. The waking side's kind of been the opposite so far. One close victory. One very big defeat. And Tony is not um, used to dealing with criminals of this kind of nature. Criminals of reality. You know what I mean? Um, what more do I have to say? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We've got we're probably not going to have a Doom session next week, but after that we've got two more scenarios, one finale per side, one of which I'm very excited about, the other of which I'm very nervous about, uh, after which time we are going to be moving on to something else on Doomed. I'm not quite sure yet. I want to play Innsmouth, the next major big box, big box campaign. Um, there's been talks about playing... Uh, some more co-op. We're going to see what works, what ends up happening. Ah, and, uh, yeah, so there you go. There you, there you have it. Um, just going to make sure all is well here. Yeah, that's happening. Oh, howdy to you. We got Luke here. Luke, you'll be pleased to know today I'm playing as Tony Morgan, which I know is like a, a name that is similar to one of your names, but at least it's not your name that I will be shouting multiple times uh, during the session. So there's that. Um, what more can I have to say? I guess we should probably do like a previously on Doom sort of situation. And we'll jump in. Put that over there. Make sure that we've got our music going. As always, of course, let me know volume wise and so on and so forth. Uh, Rock Pants, I guarantee you, you were ma you were responsible in a major way. <laughs> I don't remember good old-fashioned uh adam jensen here but um but like yeah he was on oh geez i remember i did a few streams of adam jensen through deus ex mankind divided human revolution i think it was mankind divided um and my computer was not happy it was just freeze frame freeze frame it was like phasmophobia all over again Blah. phasmophobia is a lot of fun though uh and then we played him through one session of Dishonored 2, and I can't believe I didn't do more. He's very cool, though. Hey! Hi, everyone, all the new arrivals. Welcome to Doomed. I was just doing a quick, or I'm just about to start a quick little recap before oh, we get into it. Today, Tony Morgan, the bounty hunter, takes on... Where's the art for today's session? Aw, oh, sick! Point of no return. This is Delilah O'Rourke. Um, she's a player card that I don't have, but I just... Or, in this deck, I mean. Uh, but I think she's very cool. Oh. oh, oh, you love it. Even better. Oh, jeez. Hang on, Crosshair. Let me hang on. Hang on a second, Crosshair. I'm writing these down. Crosshair, do you do you peer into the void or is it just whatever comes to mind? <laughs> you should um, you should start doing uh, cumulative totals of the of the numbers that I draw, of the, like, actual modifiers that I draw. Cumulative totals. That'd be good. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Uh, care to sit down? What kind of, uh, what kind of tea can I get you? Endless void? Uh, <laughs> alright. Last time on Doomed, Tony Morgan, as we know, is trying to help his lover and his friend, Luke Robinson, who is currently in the Dreamlands. His body here in the waking world has been asleep, asleep, between two worlds for two and a half days now. He's getting pretty nervous. He went to the hospital with him. He managed to beat back some incursion from horrible, 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 uh, very good, very good crosshair. That's a quality joke. <laughs> love it. Um, what else we got here? We've got Boo. I loved it. I'm thrilled. Uh, he managed to beat back a an assault from the Dreaming. Uh, then accompanied Randolph Carter to the Unnameable, which was a spooky haunted house, where he got immediately uh, pwned, I think would be the word I would use, um, 
got absolutely trashed and fell down an infinite staircase. <laughs> but made it. And Randolph survived. So, I mean, you know, great. And now here they are in what was dubbed by the Black Cat as the Underworld. I should mention, oh, well, as always, of course, let me know, you know, how the balance is between music and, and my voice and whether you want to see anything or hear anything that you don't normally. I'm happy to take requests, even if I can't always, uh, you know, accommodate them. Uh, I'm quite nervous about the scenario today, as I often am. Tony Morgan is a great investigator. I do I fully don't understand how to play him solo, but that's on me. Actually, no, I do. It's just I shouldn't have taken Guardian as his off-class. Don't worry about it, guys. This is just me thinking. Nervous, because I kind of remember this scenario. I'm excited. We're going to explore the underworld. Let's see what, uh, what it holds today. We're going to look at scenario 3B. We'll look at the agenda and the act. We'll draw our opening hands. We'll get doomed. I should mention, I spent... I didn't get very much experience last time. I spent it on... Another copy of, sorry, another day, another dollar. Because <laughs> you can have two. Um, this is a permanent that gives you additional resources when you start the game. Is it worth three experience? The idea of being able to play things turn one is quite appealing. So I think for that reason alone, it's worth it. Even if you don't, you're still well on your way to having that critical mass of resources that the well-connected Tony Morgan requires. Well, so this is it, Crosshair. So uh, I started with, you start with five. My de my flaw was indebted, minus two. I bought another day, another dollar. So that's back up to five. Then I bought another day, another dollar, back up to seven. <laughs> good times, math. Um, this is still pretty good though, I will say. And like, you know, it's something, it's, it's a, uh... oh right, yeah, exactly. Oh, mm, delicious. What can I say? Right, uh, the Black Cat is no longer with Tony Morgan. He left, he told him of the underworld and then left. Um, you need to be an N name. Uh, Ned Nickerson Neubat. Um, uh, Nancy, <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Norbert, Norbert. Sorry, that's my actual name. Norbert Neubat. That's my actual answer. Also, please do what you want. <laughs> okay. Scenario 3B, point of no return. Check the campaign log. Oh, right away. If Randolph did not survive the descent, ew, if Randolph survived the descent, I don't remember. I think he survived. Randolph survived the descent. That's good. <laughs> so he was just running after Tony's, like, rolling unconscious body. Norbert. Norbert. Intro 2. You have finally reached the Dreamlands, but it is not as you expected. This Cyclopean underworld is far from the wondrous lands and fabulous cities described in Virgil Gray's writing. Perhaps the author never ventured this far underground, never found the horrors that lurk beneath the surface of the dreamlands. Damn it, Virgil! You suspect he would not have left you suspect he would not have left out tales of such a spine chilling nature. As you venture into the dark barren realm, you raise your concerns with Randolph. It is true that we are farther farther from your companions than we intended he affirms. However, if I may offer another sentiment, perhaps this is a blessing in disguise. Clearly, the underworld has something to do with the creatures invading our reality. I suggest we investigate further while we have the chance. We can return to the surface of the Dreamlands once we have discovered the truth. Okay, Randolph. I mean, I guess Tony would be down for hunting things that are causing incursions into the waking world. Hmm. You ask Randolph if he has any leads, and he steps to the edge of a jagged cliff overlooking the cavernous realm below. Great name, Luke. I love it. I have been here before, he says quietly, getting his bearings. Those walls in the distance belong to the city of Gugs. To the south is a stretch of plains that looks over the vale below. That plain is where the ghouls live. Perhaps there we can learn more. You raise your doubts aloud, wondering if such creatures are even capable of peaceful conversation. They are more intelligent than you think, and could be quite helpful if we convince them to aid us. In fact, there is one I count among my friends. Oh, okay. A, a, what is it? A friend ghoul? Okay. An artist by the name of Richard Pickman. If we are fortunate enough to find him, that might be our best chance. You still have your doubts, but at least now you have a plan. Whether or not it is a good plan remains to be seen. Okay. 
So, we have to venture to find Richard Pickman. Uh, oh, right, right, uh, Crosshair. Yeah, just so I'm clear. So, Skull is third, and then in there are no tablets. You're absolutely correct. So, when you say squiggly, I just want to check. Do you mean one of the elder things? Do you mean one of these guys? Squigglies? <laughs> no, do you mean tentacles? Shuffle that up right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it down. I'd be pretty impressed, Crosshair. Pretty impressed. Okay. Well, that's very kind of you to not invite that sort of terror into my house. Okay. Set up. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm just gonna read the important stuff here first. Tentacles. Ooh, that is really soon, isn't it? It's a couple months away. Damn. Um, Luke, did you enjoy? I feel like I've heard that you've been a couple times, so I, I imagine if you hated it, you wouldn't have gone a couple times. But is it in, is it enjoyable? Each of the locations in this scenario have no unrevealed side, and therefore they enter play with their revealed side face up. This is like uh, Search for Kadath uh, on the Dreaming side. Instead of an unrevealed side, these locations have story cards on their reverse sides. Whenever a location enters play, including during setup, place clues on it equal to its clue value, fine. Locations can be flipped over in one of two ways. Most are flipped over by the veiled keyword described below. Some are instead flipped over by an ability on it, fine. Once a location has been flipped over and its story text has been read, it cannot be flipped over again for the remainder of the game, unless otherwise noted. <laughs> Not just for the bias, too. I genuinely loved it. Oh, that's good, Luke. <laughs> but I'm biased. <laughs> no, that's great. Veiled. Many of the locations in the scenario are veiled. It represents a location that contains unknown lore or assistance that must be sought out before it can be of use. As a free triggered ability, an investigator of a veiled location with no clues may flip it, resolving its text. Great. So if it has no clues, you can flip the location over and resolve whatever is on the other side. As we discovered in Search for Kadath, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. So, uh, I guess we'll figure that out. Let's look at setup real quick here. Gather encounter sets, blah, put the following locations into play. We begin at Vaults of Zin. There's got to be some good thrown in, though, right, Crosshair? Because otherwise, you know, you'd never flip them over, right? Or you'd never think to, I guess? Hmm. Uh, search the collection for blah, 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 blah. Check the campaign log. Depending on the following circumstances, a different version of Act 1 should be used. Oh, okay, so if Randolph survived or did not survive. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's here. Yeah, okay, cool. Survived, great. <gasps> oh no! A wave of pain and nausea washes over you. Check the number of tally marks recorded next to Steps of the Bridge. Now, this is something that's been updated a couple times, but I frankly do not remember what, like, we don't know what the bridge is. Oh, probably the bridge between realities, right? But what, we were gonna add some if we messed up the first scenario. Let's have a look. Steps of the bridge. There are zero recorded here. That feels right, because we didn't get any in the first scenario. I don't remember any in the second. Hi, Ripley, are you coming to see me? Come on, come on. No cats in this scenario, I don't think, Ripley, but you can be in this scenario if you want. Boy, there she is. Good job, buddy. If there are no tally marks, nothing happens. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, jeez. Careful, Ripley. <laughs> she gets so scared. <laughs> She's like, oh, sound. <laughs> You're like, it's a bottle of water. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What are you doing? Okay, shuffle the remainder of the encounter deck. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> okay. Agenda 1A. A sinister realm. The underworld is a cavernous realm, almost another world unto itself. This is just like in um, Forgotten Age, eh, Crosshair? That cave? Wasn't there a cave mission? <laughs> its ceiling is so far in the distance that it might as well be a somber, overcast sky. The walls of the caverns are dimly lit by a flickering gray light with no apparent source. Ah, yes, the space cave! Yeet! <laughs> You wander through the twisting catacombs in search of the way forward, but you can't shake the feeling that you're being followed. That's what I mean, Luke. Like, some cats, just so jumpy. And I mean, that's fine, obviously, to each their own, but jeez, Louise. 
Act 1A, entering the under... Oh, sorry, 5 Doom on the agenda. You have succeeded in reaching the Dreamlands, but this is not quite what you expected. You are in the Underworld, and it will take some work to find your bearings in this sinister place. Ah, after an enemy with one or more clues on it is defeated, take control of those clues. That's good, because Tony's Tony loves beating people up, and he can get information out of them. Like, give me some information, huh? Objective, find Richard Upton Pickman. You will be instructed when to advance. Well, we know he was in some sort of plains to the south. Let's have a look at the map. Right, everything's revealed because they're all revealed locations in this scenario. The Vaults of Zin is where we start. Ooh. For this is the mouth of the Vaults of Zin, and the vindictive ghasts are always on watch there murderously for those denizens of the Upper Abyss who hunt and prey on them. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Let's go south to the Plain of the Ghouls. Four Shroud, one clue. Uh, it says Gug enemies can't enter it. What are, they, what are these gugs and ghouls and ghasts? Like, what are they talking about? Gug enemies can't enter the plains of the ghouls. If a gug enemy would spawn here, spawn it at City of Gugs. I mean, that seems appropriate. The ghouls were in general respectful, even if one did attempt to pinch him while several others eyed his leanness speculatively. <laughs> Give me your cheeks. You're cute, kid. You're cute. Ah, and then this is the City of Gugs. Two shroud, one clue, victory one. That's a nice target for a clue. After you enter City of Gugs, flip it over and resolve the text on its other side. That's not good. That's That can't be good. There's no way. And then up from there is the Tower of Koth. Test combat five to lift the heavy stone trap door at the top of the tower. If you succeed, flip this card over and resolve the text on its other side. You are surprised to find that none of the creatures that dwell within within in the city within the city seem to reside within this vast structure at the heart of the city aside from the strange sign upon the tower's doorway it is barren and devoid of any decoration or purpose it seems to be connected to another location that isn't in play okay i'm just looking at all the connections right that's really interesting as is the plane of the ghouls Okay, so we have to we have to find Richard Upperman Picton. He's definitely in the plane of the ghouls because where else would he be? I imagine we need clues. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I don't know. I'm just gonna save. Zin is connected to two two. Yeah, it's connected to the city of Gugs. And the, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, I should say. Um, I think otherwise we're good. Vaults of Zin is connected to city of Gugs. Plane of the ghouls. Plane of the ghouls is connected to. Vaults of Zen, City of Gugs, and something else, which is not here. Ooh. And then same up this way. All right. I think it is time. Tony Morgan is here. He has with him some weapons. He has Randolph Carter. He has his experience. He has his combat training. And he has somewhere in his possession, uh, what's it called? The Crystallizer of Dreams, that strange device relic given to him by his lover, Luke Robinson. Let's do it. Yeah, well, this is it. Uh, crosshair. I'm thinking that this is good for us, because we have a base combat strength of five. What can we do? Okay, here, actually, let's have a look as well. Um, point of no return. Skulls are minus X. X is the amount of damage on this card, which is zero. So that's nice. <laughs> Uh, cultist reveal another token if you fail oh draw the top card of the encounter deck Blah. no tablets and the elder thing is minus three if you fail by two or more choose a ready enemy at your location or a connecting location it moves it engages you and it attacks you well that sucks okay so three up is where we want to be as much as possible let's do it let's draw our opening hand let's get doomed ka -chow! I, I don't like this. Um, sleight of hand flashlight is nice. I think we want to keep a flashlight for venturing into the cave. CC, that will, <laughs> that will help us get some quick quick and easy clues, I think. So I'm going to put back well-connected counter espionage, great card. Intel report, also a great card, because we're looking for more. Okay. Money, money, counter espionage, I'll take it. So this is good. Okay. 
Am I taking a little setup turn? I'd love to, um, let's figure out what we want to do here. Tony has found himself down in a place known as the Vaults of Zin, and he's to find his way down to the city of ghouls. Hi, Ripley. <laughs> oh, cat attack here. Oh, we're not playing Kadath. We're not playing with the cats from Saturn. Well, this is the thing, Crosshair. I've been thinking about the game quite a lot recently. A shocker, I know. Um, someone suggested on a couple of the podcasts that I listened to, you can group investigators in terms of like their role or their class or like how they play or whatever, but every investigator is so unique. They suggested one way of doing team composition is some investigators are good to go from the beginning. They don't need a lot of assets. They could just kind of you know, commit cards, they can roll with their stat line, whatever it is, you know? And there are some investigators that require setup. Mystics need their spells, otherwise they can't do anything. Because what are they gonna do? Just like stare at the problem, you know? Ah, RJ Cody, hello! Welcome to Doomed. Uh, and so, you know, there's an idea of like, yeah, if you, there's a potential sort of idea of like, well, if you have some people on your team that can just kind of go right away, the people who are need to set up the the carries, if you will, can can set up and carry. Okay, I kind of want to take a setup turn. Uh, maybe I'll just play flashlight instead of because if I if I slide it out, I'm gonna want to get at least sleight of hand is a card that allows you to fast play an item, uh, and then at the end of your turn, if it's still in play, return it to your hand. So I'd want to get at least two clues with it. Get a clue, move, get a clue, probably. But then I don't get to, like, play Lone Wolf or whatever. So maybe I just play it out. Yeah, and then, yeah, we're taking a setup turn. Tony Morgan is going to get ready to see what happens to him here uh, down in the underworld. He's having a look around. He's consulting Randolph Carter. He knows that they are looking for this ghoul, Richard Upton Pickman, who's going to help them. But in the meantime, he needs to make sure that he has what he needs. A lone wolf and a flashlight. I'm just going to play it out straight. Uh, and then last action, I'm going to play Faustian Bargain. Uh, this is an event that gives you uh, adds two curse tokens, but it gives you five resources, which I'm definitely going to do. Um, Tony, down here in the depths of the underworld, beneath the dreamlands, beneath the waking world that he's so accustomed to. He's at his wit's end, but he has promised to get Luke Robinson back come hell or high water. Has he made a deal with the devil? Maybe. No enemies on the board, so we move to upkeep where we draw a card, we gain a resource. And it's a gun! I can slide out a gun! That's great! Excellent! Excellent, excellent, excellent. We go to one out of five doom. Shuffle the encounter deck. <laughs> And we draw an encounter card. What's going to happen here in the vaults of Zin? Oh. Ugh. This is a ghoul minion. It was a colossal and nameless blasphemy with glaring red eyes, and it held in bony claws a thing that had been a man, gnawing at the head as a child nibbles at a stick of candy. H.P. Lovecraft, Pickman's model. That must be Richard Upton Pickman. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> time to kill. I'm going to put um, a bounty on it. Am I going to put two bounties on it? It seems a little unnecessary, huh? Eh, just one. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, out of the darkness rushes a creature about six and a half feet tall, gibbering madness, uh, something that is unintelligent. This is maybe one of the creatures that Tony Morgan was supposed to sort of, like, interact with or try to, uh, you know communicate with, but this thing is not going to be... It's not willing to be communicated with, that's for sure. So, quick as lightning... Oh, sorry, my turn begins, and I gain a resource from Lone Wolf, which takes me up to 11. Then, quick as lightning, sleight of hand, put out a gun. Quick as lightning, his long colt comes out of his coat pocket, ready, and fires one slug dead into the center of the ghoul minion. Let's fight. I'm going to spend an ammo from the long colt. Um, 
Spend one ammo fight. You get plus one for each bounty on the attacked enemy. It deals plus one damage. If you succeed, if you defeat it, sorry, you can put a bounty on bounty contracts. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a free action as well, isn't it? Thank you, Crusher. Exactly. Can. Can. Have to. I believe you have to. If you get the extra action, it kind of like goes first, right? I think. Uh, okay. So we're fighting at six to two. Uh, bang, bang. Shot me down. Let's go. Bang. <laughs> um, the bullet finds its mark. The ghoul slumps over. We get a resource. Oh, we put a bounty on bounty contracts, and we get the resource from the bounty. Um, love it. Love that for us. Oh, yeah. Right. Sorry, Crosshair. Okay, so I'm making a note. That was a skull. It, ha it was a minus zero. And you called the skull later. So I'm going to give you 0.5. It has a modifier of zero, which is what you called first. Second action. Tony realizes the longer he stays here, the longer he's going to have to deal with strange, misshapen, malicious creatures that creep out of the darkness, and he is not willing to do that. So second action we are going to investigate here at the... This is a good question reading. Is it plus zero or minus zero? Uh, it is a good question. Uh, zero is, by definition, uh, both positive and negative, or neither. No, I can't remember. Um, I do know that zero is an even number. I discussed this at length the other day. That was kind of fun. Okay. Oh, yes, right, that's true. Uh, it's Yes, it's minus x, where x is the amount of damage, so it's minus zero. That's correct. Yeah, thank you. That's very true. Ripley, what are you doing over there? What are you doing over there, Ripley, huh? Little silly little kitty. Let's investigate the vaults of Zin. Uh, I have three intellect. I've reduced the shroud by two with the flashlight, so it's three to one currently. Let's try to find out what's uh, what's here. Let's see what's in the vaults. Three to one. That's a zero. Cross here. That was zero. So that was not a m minus one, but I'll give you that one because that was a zero. Okay, get the clue. And I'm going to free trigger. I'm going to flip Vaults of Zin because I, I really want to know what's on the backs of these things. Hisses and uncanny voices pursue you throughout this web of darkened intersecting tunnels. You believe the myriad paths might lead all the way to the surface of the dreamlands, considering the vastness of the network of caverns. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Crosshair. It is a wonder you can even find your way back to where you started. However, you are not alone when you emerge. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a ghast enemy. Not a ghoul, not a gug, but a ghast. Spawn it here, exhausted, and with a clue on it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Flip this card back over. If I kill an enemy with a clue, I get the clue. And I'm going to do that. Let's do it. We're searching for a ghast. Spawning it here. And then shuffling the encounter discard pile. I'm not super familiar. I'm just having a look through the deck. I'm trying not to read things. That's a ghast. Shuffle. So we spawn it here exhausted and with a clue on it, and I'll have a read. Uh, this is obviously a creature that pursued Tony out of the darkness. Uh, and because it entered play, I'm going to put a bounty on it. ka -chow. Goose it. The hunting ghast. Oh, I think we saw one of these in the last scenario. This is a ghast 223 hunter. Preys on the most damage, so it's trying to eat the weak, right? After hunting ghast enters a location with a, a gug... Okay, ready each gug at its location and deal a damage to hunting ghast. Okay, so the gugs don't like the ghasts. Can someone? I feel like I'm going insane. <laughs> well, you know the gugs don't like the ghasts. It goes back many generations. Tony hears the creature behind him before he sees it. It seems to be snuffling in the distance. But uh, I'm going to flip this card back over. But of course, Tony is used to taking a crack shot. Once again, sleight of hand, fast as lightning. He's going to use the long colt. Oh, interesting. Hmm. He's going to use the long colt to blast the ghast. So it's got two combat. Uh, I'm going to fight it with my long colt uh, at six to two. 
Okay. That's a minus three crosshair. That was not one of your tokens, unfortunately. I'm sorry to say. The elder thing has a modifier of minus three, so I'll give you a point five. Ooh, original beastie. But that's still a success, so we get the clue. We get the resource, the bounty, rather. We kill the ghast. I don't know, man. What's what's even happening? Uh, it goes back on the bounty as a, as a thing, and I get a resource. This is great. Gugs are worshippers of the great old ones, the gods of Earth, who reside in Kadath. They are... Huh? Huh? They are 16 feet tall and weigh nearly 2,000 pounds. Serious question... Do I want to go to the city of Gugs? This doesn't feel like a good idea. <laughs> but... No, that feels like a bad idea. Okay, let me... let me. Can Cal and Brom be besties? I don't think Brom would ever use that word, but yeah. Hi, Thanatoasted, what's going on? <laughs> I don't... I don't know if Brom would consider himself... Like, he has, an, he has a motley, he has a... a a, a, a wife, a partner. Um, he has friends. If you asked him, he'd probably be like, my best friend, other than my motley or my wife, is probably Sir Zeron. And then he would just like blink at you for a while. Um, but yeah, I think we can, I think I sure think they could become friends. <laughs> okay. I still have one action left. Close enough with my void understanding. Woohoo! Okay, let's think about this. I need to go to the plane of the ghouls. Because that's definitely where Picton is. That's my objective as well, right? If I go to the city of Gugs, it says flip th flip it over and resolve its text. That's like, that feels bad. I don't know what it is, but it just, it doesn't feel like it's gonna go well. And then up here at Tower of Koth, it just says test combat five to lift the heavy stone door. If you succeed, flip this card over. Like what is happening? Okay, well, I'm not moving into the city of Gug's last action, because I guarantee you something bad is going to happen. What am I doing last action? That's a great question. I'm going to draw a card. That's always a terrible thing to do last action. Hey, it's a clue. I'll take it. We go into the enemy phase. Uh, sorry, and then sleight of hand said to put the long colt back, so it returns to hand. So far... Tony's managed to find his way through the vaults of Zin. He's found evidence um, leading him further down to the plane of the ghouls, but no sort of information yet about what this underworld is, who these various groups are, and why they might be sort of fighting each other. We go to upkeep where I draw a card and gain a resource. It's a gun. <laughs> it's another gun. It's the Mauser. Let me go back to Mythos. We haven't moved from our opening location, but I do have two clues. We go to two out of five Doom, and we draw an encounter card. Yish! Carter turns sick at that aspect of the scabrous and unwholesome beast. Ugh. Test will three. For each point you fail by, you must choose place choose one. For each point you fail by, you must choose one. Place one of your clues on your location, place one of your clues on the nearest enemy, or take a damage. Well... I might end up taking some damage here as the taste of lifeblood sickens him to his very core. He's, he's watching one of the ghasts off in the distance, like, munch down on some some, some, some sort of flesh. Uh, I have two will. Um, I, don't, I don't want to commit counter-espionage. It's too valuable. So I'm just going to test this on, on my face. Oh, that was the worst one. Okay. This is a minus three. If you fail by two or more, choose a ready enemy at your location or connecting your location. There are none. Fine. Fine, good. So I did fail. Doesn't feel very good. So I have to either put clues back on my location, which like, ugh, or take three damage. So I'm just going to take three damage on my face and really hope that that doesn't come back to bite me in the butt, which of course it will. Discarded. Lone Wolf gets me a resource. Tony's ready to move on. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, pretty good, right? There was a skull. There was an elder thing. There was a zero. And there was something else. I can't remember what the other one was. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Um, okay. Do we go... Think of how much like time I have in this scenario. 
Yeah, I want the victory points. I don't want to die, but I do want the victory points. Let's play out a gun. The Mouser. I like the Mouser. It's fun. Uh, and then we're going to move into the city of Gugs. I don't know what's going to happen here. After you enter the city of Gugs, flip it and resolve the text. Carter followed the loping three out of the forest of monoliths and into the dark, noisome streets of that awful city whose rounded towers of cyclopean stone soared up beyond the sight. Interesting way of putting that. The Kingdom of Gugs is sur sorry, this is called the Sentry. The Kingdom of Gugs is surrounded by a colossal wall. Inside cylindr <laughs> Mousers and men. Inside cylindrical towers rise high into the mist, each one windowless and made of grey stone, with large looming doorways at the bottom. One black tower stands paramount among the others, rising into the very ceiling of the underworld. You do not make it very far before you spot the sentry standing guard outside the city's walls. A tremendous creature with huge furry arms and obscene toothy maw extending vertically through its head. Spawn the set aside. Son of a bitch. Gug Sentinel enemy at this location with a clue on it. One per. <laughs> We're gonna look at you later, my friend. Uh, put a clue on it. Very good. Test agility three. If you succeed, Gug Sentinel enters play exhausted and unengaged. Otherwise, it enters play engaged with you flip this card back over. Test Agility 3. If you succeed, it is unengaged. Okay. Well, I have 2 Agility. I'm not gonna, like, throw in on this. I'm just gonna do it. 2 to 3. Because you never know, right? <laughs> Spawn set aside, son of a bitch. Alright, so the Gug enters play at my location. Engaged with me. <sighs> this is a... Five combat, two health, three agility enemy, monster gug. Ah, uh, it gets plus two health for investigators. So it's a five, four, three. A forced, after it readies, deal a horror to each investigator at its location. Yeesh, gabish. That is no bueno. Um, uh oh. Oh, and of course it enters play, so I'm going to put um, two bounties on it. I kind of want to try to evade. So, oh no, I don't have. I should have, yeah, I should have, ah, I should have, the long colt is a better gun. <laughs> it's fine. All right, well, we're definitely not going to make it, but let's try it, I guess. Yeesh. I have two actions. If I succeed at a fight with the mouser by two or more, I can ready the mouser again, and then I can fight again, and if I succeed again, I'll kill it. <laughs> Otherwise, I am taking a huge amount of damage. Oh, this bodes so well for the beginning of the scenario. Let's fight. Yeah, it's not fair. Deal a horror when it readies. So you could evade, like, I could evade and move. I could evade and move. Sorry, I could try to evade and move. But then if I fail evasion, maybe that's just not worth it. Oh boy. Um, okay. No, we 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 gotta at least try to fight. Right? We gotta at least try. Yeah, here across here. After it readies, deal one horror to each investigator at its location. After it readies. But like I'm not gonna succeed two to three trying to evade this thing. I mean I like I might, but I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's fight. This is going to go very poorly. Uh, the mouser. So, of course, Tony was not ready to deal with this creature. His long colt is great up close. And actually, it's quite accurate at a distance. But something of this size needs a bit more firepower. So he pulls out his machine pistol. The thing that he's been using to, uh, you know, st strike down, um, dam of the dead. <laughs> Incredible. He's been using it to strike down spiders. Fight! You get plus one combat and deal plus one damage. Come on, baby. Six to five. Hang on, I should commit to this. Should I commit the long cold? Is that crazy? Six, seven, eight to five? Yeah, let's do it. Eight to five. Pachow! Cultist, reveal another token. Whew, that is very lucky. 
Okay. Okay. So. Um, two damage. As the bullets ricochet off the beast, it just gets angrier, but he can see it bleeding as it sort of roars and stumbles towards him. A horrible piece of art. The Then two pink eyes shone, and the head of the awakened Gug sentry, large as a barrel, wobbled into view. Uh, the mouser readies if I succeed by two or more. Or I can gain a resource, but I'm going to ready it so that I can last action fight again. Now this is where it gets really tricksy. I have six combat. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We can outrun it if it has blood. <laughs> um, <laughs> six combat plus one from the from the mouser. So six to five. I don't want to, but I'm going to. I'm going to commit scene of the crime to be seven to five. As the as he readies another volley, he's going to try to take down the sentinel once and for all, aiming for its horrible vertical mouth. Seven to five. Cursed money! Seven to five, minus two. Ooh, ooh, okay. Yay! Um, <laughs> so, I was up by two, minus two from the curse, then zero, so I still succeed. I don't get any benefit from the mouser, but the bullets find their mark. The creature's head Oh, knocks back and it collapses. Boom. Kicking up a huge cloud of dust as it does so. That's great. Wow. I honestly didn't think that was going to happen. Hi, right, Ripley. Alright, well, I get the two resources from the bounty. I get a clue because there was a clue on it and I defeated a victory one enemy so early in the scenario. Okay. Great. That's great news. And oh, there's still no more enemies, so we move to upkeep. Draw a card. We gain a resource. Well connected. There we go. This is now. Now, now we're gonna. Now we're getting somewhere. Right, cats? Yeah. Tony is breathing heavily from his fight with the Sentinel, but having defeated it and it not having raised an alarm, he's able to make a quick escape into the city of Gugs where he hopes to find out more uh, before heading back to the Plane of the Ghouls, I guess. Let's go to Mythos, where I go to three out of five Doom already. I've done a lot, I've done a lot. And I draw an encounter card. It's frozen in fear. Now, I'm gonna tell you this straight out. Tony is not frozen in fear. He knew what to expect in the City of Gugs because of Randolph Carter. I'm doing this. I'm playing uh, <laughs> Top Secret. I'm playing Counter Espionage. This is one of the worst cards encounter cards against rogues it says put into play in your threat area the first time you perform one of the following actions each round it costs an additional action so that's move fight or evade so trying to fight trying to evade trying to move costs you extra actions and then it says at the end of your turn test will three and if you succeed discard it it's a forced test and rogues typically don't have good will power so they're just going to be frozen in fear forever so i'm going to cancel this uh effect this is the intelligence that he received from Randolph Carter is what's saving his bacon here. Fast, play when you draw a non-weakness in here. Cancel the rev card's revelation effect and draw the top card of the encounter deck. I can increase its cost to four to draw a card from my deck instead. So, cost me four, but I'm gonna draw a card. <sighs> Evidence. That's nice, that's really nice. Let me go back to Mythos, gain a resource from Lone Wolf. Okay. Feels good. Feels really good, actually. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the problem is I'm sure there's going to be other stuff that I'm going to be like, ah, oh, why didn't I cancel that? Oh. But I feel like frozen in fear doesn't make a lot of sense for Tony here because... Of course, he's unprepared for so much, but at least he would know some things, right? So I gain a resource from Lone Wolf. Uh, Tony is, of course, well-connected. Now, naturally, this connection does not extend to Gugs, Ghouls, or Ghasts, but perhaps it is Randolph's connections that are going to make or break the scenario later. I'm going to get the clue on my location because it's only two Shroud. 
and I want it. But what if I need it for X? <laughs> well, exactly, Crosshair. This is the classic. This is the classic game that says, "Oh, you want to make that move? I don't think it's the right move." And you're like, "No, no, it is." And they're like, "Okay." And then later on, they're like, "Mm-hmm." <laughs> Let's get this clue. I'm gonna spend a flashlight charge. So I'm investigating it three to zero. That's that's good enough. I'm gonna get the clue up this location. I'm so excited for victory points if I can make it happen. Last action, I'm gonna move up. I really wanna know what this Tower of Koth business is. So I'm gonna move up to the Tower of Koth. And there I will end my turn. No enemies, upkeep, draw a card and gain a resource. Okay, glory. Um, I should point out, Tony's made his way through the city of Gugs. He killed the sentry. Which was quite lucky, I gotta say. Gotta say. Um, and he's now surprised to find that there's this one single giant structure that seems to reach up and up and up forever, but no one lives there. Nothing. It's. It seems. It serves no purpose. He's not. He's not an overly curious kind of guy. But if it leads up, perhaps it leads up to the surface, back to the waking world, back somewhere in Arkham. So I'm gonna try to deal with that. Uh, on my turn if I can. Did I upkeep? Yes, I did. So I go to four out of five doom. There's a faint smell of burning manure in the lobby. Oh, the ziggurat. Now that takes me back. Man, what a crazy, what a crazy life we live. Draw an encounter card. Son of a... Ugh! See, this is what I should have saved my encounter espionage for. Dark forces stir against you. If you do not act quickly, a sinister plot will be fulfilled. This is place one doom on the current agenda. It will advance the agenda. I mean, you know, just lost a turn, I guess. Thanks a lot, the ancient evils. Clearly, Tony was not meant to explore this tower. Uh, ancient gerbil strikes again. So I go to five out of five doom and I have to advance the agenda. But I've already drawn my encounter card. The path darkens. Ah, naturally, he he was, um, he was just about to explore the stone tower. A sudden wave of pain and nausea passes over you, and for a brief moment, it seems the very fabric of reality is tearing apart. The feeling passes quickly, but it's obvious that something is not quite right. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Place a damage on the scenario reference card. This makes uh, skulls minus one. Also, I've put back in all the cards that I was like, me. Agenda 2A, beset by monsters. Ugh. As you continue to explore, the creatures of the underworld grow agitated and begin to pursue you as if compelled by some unseen force. Hint, the game will not necessarily end when this agenda advances, but the stability of reality will continue to unravel. For doom. <laughs> I like it's not necessarily. It won't necessarily end. Well, that's good, because I don't think I'm anywhere near the ending. Uh, I've already drawn my encounter card, so we gain a resource from Lone Wolf. We're here at the tower. The wave of nausea has passed. Tony is back to feeling his normal self. And he is not necessarily sure what to expect. But he needs to know what this tower holds. So we are going to try to force open the trap door. I have five combat. I'm well connected. That's uh, obviously Randolph Carter is going to assist me with this. It gives me plus one for every five resources I have, so I'm up to seven to five. That is that is good enough. They barely managed to move the stone slab. Flip this card over. Another path. Step after step, you scale the tower until you reach the heavy trapdoor at the top. When you push the stone aside, a column of bright light pierces through the shaft, blinding you. The surface. You emerge in an area thick with trees and mystical fog. After so many hours spent underground, the cool breeze feels wonderful. Many curious eyes watch you from the surrounding woods. Though you long to stay and explore more of these wilds, you know your true goal lies back down in the caverns below the surface. Of course it does. Put the set aside Enchanted Woods. Oh, the Enchanted Woods from Luke Robinson's journey. Stone Trap Door into play revealed. Record in your campaign log that the investigators found a way out of the underworld. 
flip this card back over. I'm definitely going to record that. Wee! That's great news. Tony found a way out of the underworld. That is, like, that is great news. It, sorry, it feels like it's great news. I'm looking for the Enchanted Woods. And I'll put it above here because that feels right. Uh, flip this card back over. I'm pretty sure it's connected, right? That's That would make sense. Let's have a look at it. Uh, yeah. The Enchanted Woods Stone Trap Door. Oh! At that spot, a mighty slab of stone rests on the forest floor. I remember this. Hey, Gunna. What's going on? How you doing? Welcome to Doomed. Just exploring the underworld beneath the dreamlands as we search for a way forward to rescue our people and save the world. Don't worry about it. The Enchanted Woods is a two shroud, one clue, two victory location. Oh, while you're investigating this location, it gets plus one shroud for each card in your hand. Oh man, oh, that's okay. Actually, that's okay. Oh, but victory two. Baby. Put a clue on it. Um, Great, let's go and get that clue. I'm gonna move out and I'm going to investigate. Yeah, using the flashlight, three to zero. Let's, no, hang on. It gets plus one shroud for each card in your hand. So it's currently a four shroud location. If I discard something, it'll be a three shroud location. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna spend a flashlight charge, which lowers the shroud to two, and I'm going to commit evidence. Evidence? Yes, I'm gonna commit evidence. Correct. So I have five intellect against a sh hang on a second is that, is that overkill i have five intellect against the shroud of one no it's okay that's okay five to one let's do it five to one that's fine that's great okay cool okay well if nothing else we've got a, a heck of a lot of victory points look at all these victory points Wee! that's great news okay Enemy phase, nothing happens. We're up here all alone in the enchanted woods. Tony's blinking and looking around, trying to be like, what's going on up here? Like, you know, what is this place? Ah, uh, no, it is not, unfortunately. It doesn't have the veiled key. Oh, also, it, it was unrevealed on the other side. Sorry, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't flip things just willy-nilly if I didn't know. <laughs> That's, that'd be so rude. Let's upkeep. Okay. Another lone wolf. Wow. <laughs> Cool. We go to one out of four Doom uh, on the new agenda, and we draw an encounter card. Up here in the Enchanted Woods, son of a gun, Rotting Remains. Test Will 3. For each point you fail by, take a horror. Venturing just a couple steps outside the stone trap door, something catches Tony's eye. Something surrounded by little zoogs feeding on it. He sees a pant leg a foot, then an arm, and then a ring. And for the briefest of moments, it is his love, Luke Robinson's body, being eaten by Zoogs. Let's see how much horror he takes. In response to this, uh, I am not... I, uh, uh, yeah, I am well connected. Um, that makes sense, right? So I <laughs> go to four, four to three, Will. Yeah, party. Four to three, and we draw, an, uh, draw a token. Four to three. That That's fine. That's fine. Randolph Carter manages to steady Tony and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look closer. You know, he's like, don't, don't worry. They shoo off the Zoogs, and it is not the body of Luke Robinson. It is, it is uh, the body of a ghoul, actually. Long dead, long picked apart. I take no horror. I get a resource from Lone Wolf. And I think I'm just gonna move back down the stone tower, back through the city of Gugs, and over to the plane of the ghouls, baby. That's three actions. Kind of sucks. That's okay. Plane of the ghouls. Gug enemies can't enter it. That's fine. Uh, so that's it. That was a, kind of an, an annoying turn. He ventures back out, sort of, despite the fact that he's like happy that it's not. Mm hmm. I agree, Crosshair. Despite the fact that it wasn't God, it wasn't his love's body, at least, you know, it's, it's, he knows that his, his journey lies 
back in the underworld. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a whole turn to get back down to Plane of the Ghouls, but what are you going to do? Upkeep draws us a card. <gasps> Ever Vigilant, which we have nothing to play with right now, but it commits for two intellect icons. <laughs> One at a time, play up to three assets from your hand. Great card. Really great, especially if you start with it. <laughs> and we go to the Mythos phase. Tony is venturing down the cliffs into the Plane of the Ghouls, although he does not know what to expect down there. Two out of for Doom, you draw an encounter card here. It's Grasping Hands! Ah! Test Agility 3. For each point you fail by, take a damage. Well, I have 2 Agility. I'm going to commit Lone Wolf to be 3. I think I want to keep my Well Connected to get the... I'm just thinking about my turn here. Max. <laughs> what a silly little guy. I can go to 5 to 3 and probably not take any damage. I still have some damage left. I think we're okay. Let's just... <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, hands shoot up from the dirt and stone as uh, Tony realizes that he is, in fact, it is not a plane upon which the ghouls live. It is a plane built of the dead of the ghouls themselves. 3 to 3. Cultists reveal another token. That's not good. That's really bad. Yeah, that's really bad. Okay, so that's minus three. I'm supposed to choose a ready enemy at your location or your connecting location, but there are none, so that's okay. But then, so first of all, I take three damage. Just goes right on my face. That's really bad. Then, after this skill test ends, draw the top card of the encounter deck. <laughs> More hands! <laughs> ow, 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 ouch. No, I can't believe it. How dare you? Decaying hands rise up from below and grasp and claw at your ankles. How? Why are there two of them? Okay, well, now I have to hit Well Connected, which takes me up to four to three. What if I just die here? Oh, Crosshair, can we have a do-over if I just die here? Four to three, please. <laughs> I go to eight out of nine damage. What an idiot! <laughs> the hands grasp and pull and tear at Tony's flesh as he manages to just escape. Oh my gosh. Um, and we're back here at the Plane of the Ghouls. Good golly, Miss Molly. Now, what I should be doing, of course, is drawing for an ally. What's the worst that can happen? That was disgusting. I mean, honestly. It could have been six, and then I could be dead. What's the worst that can happen? I could draw... I could draw Tony's quarry, but that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to draw cards. Isn't that sad? Draw a card. Take the initiative. Draw a card. Well connected. Draw. Uh, should I try to get the clue last action? Sure, why not? I have... Let's see. I have three intellect. It's a four shroud location. I'm going to commit Ever Vigilant to be 5 to 4. Last action. Let's try to get this clue. Oh, yes. Well, it's out of supplies, that's for sure. It's out of supplies. 5 to 4. <sighs> okay, well, nothing, again, nothing bad happens at least, so that's good. So I failed to get the clue. Very disappointing. Tony is stumped. How is he ever going to get past this plane of the ghouls? Uh, how is he ever going to find out, find this Richard Upton Pickman if all that happens is that he continues to get just absolutely destroyed? Upkeep draws me a card. <gasps> it's Randolph Carter. Okay, here's the deal. If I, if I, if I don't, if I draw a card that says take a damage, I'm dead. If I don't draw a card that says take a damage, I can hopefully survive. Did I get my lone wolf resource? Doesn't matter. Mythos phase. We go to three out of four doom, and we draw the encounter card that will decide the next phase of this game, apparently. Um, Tony is, of course, looking for a way across the plains, and he's hoping that Randolph will be able to help him. Okay. 
doesn't kill me. <laughs> this is ancient evils, which obviously places a doom and automatically advances the agenda. Like, come on. I mean, it is goulash, so I have to advance the agenda. Agenda 2B. The Weaver approaches. Again, you are shaken by a sudden feeling of instability as reality shifts and bends around you. The wave is more intense than before, and it seems to originate from the sea of pitch in the depths of the underworld. Don't know what that is. Each investigator must either discard a card at random or lose two resources. No problem, I'm losing two resources. That's that's a absolute no-brainer. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. I hate you. Thanks so much. Place a damage on the scenario reference card. Okay. So that takes it to two damage. Oh, where's the... Oh. Shoot, though. Anyway, there should have been one there before, but nothing. That's fine. Then, if there are five or more damage, proceed to resolution two. Otherwise, flip this agenda back over. Okay. Okay, so that means I have eight more turns, right? Or eight more doom. That'll get me to four tokens on the thing, and then I have another four turns. Okay, so I have 12 doom. Probably some ancient evils. Maybe 10. <clears throat> okay, not bad. Um, oh, what's going on? Excuse me. Man, the cats are out in force. All right, so that's good. Did we already draw our encounter card? Yes, we did. It was the ancient evils that did all this bullshit. <laughs> so we go back to the investigation phase where the lone wolf draws me, gets me a resource. Absolute first thing I have to do uh, is put down Randolph Carter. It's an absolute no-brainer. I'm going to do that. Then, second action. Let's see. Uh, he gives me plus one will and plus one intellect. Um, what am I thinking here? Tony consults with Randolph. You know, he was like, I thought you said they weren't beastly. I thought you said they were creatures that might want to aid us. And he's like, no, I said Richard Upton Pickman might want to aid us. We need to find him. Randolph motions across the cavern. There seems to be a path away from the gravestones and the bodies that had pinched at his ankles so vigorously. Uh, it's a four shroud location. I am going to investigate. I have four intellect. Um, I'll, co I'll hit well connected and commit well connected to go up to seven to four. That's actually fine. I'm shocked. Okay, so we get this clue. Crosshair, you let me know when you're back and I'll tell you all about it, buddy. Okay, that's great. I mean, I'm in big tr I don't have any healing. <laughs> I don't have any healing, I don't have any way. Oh boy. What a disaster. I just hope I don't have to take any more like damage from anything. Let's flip the plane of the ghouls. If the investigators possess fewer than three clues, okay. If the investigators possess at least three clues. Having spent considerable time exploring the upper layer, yes, you understand the ghoul's nature a bit more. They are more welcoming than their kin have been in the past, speaking to you in grunting, monosyllabic English. As you consider your options, you are approached by one of their kind who still wears human clothing. Unlike the rest, he is able to communicate with you perfectly. With an air authority of with an air of authority and wisdom about him, he demands to know why you've come to this place. The investigators spend three clues as a group, advance the current act, flip this card back over. No problem. I love it. I'll spend my three clues with pleasure. Uh, I will flip this back over. I'm waiting for Crosshair to return. Let's get these things out of here. Ah, oh, perfect timing, the Crosshair. So Crosshair, I put down um, an ally who has some health to help me soak. And I got this clue. So if I had at least three clues, I can spend them to advance the act, which is which is what I'm doing. So I won't I won't reread that, but I will tell you that I am advancing act one B, an unlikely ally. 
Randolph gives a shout of recognition as the ghoul approaches. It's great that I just put him into play too, it's great. He and the creature shake hands and converse for a short while, after which he introduces you. This is the ghoul I spoke to you about. He's an old friend of mine, and he's offered to guide us through the underworld. He has some dire news, however. Randolph goes on to explain. Strange happenings have been occurring within the underworld. No, really? Wow. He tells of dark forces spreading throughout the Vale, below the plane of the ghouls, of vile weavers that crawl along the cavern walls, and of a terrible howling cry that penetrates through the route, throughout the realm. All of it, he says, emanates from one place, an ocean of pitch in the realm's deepest layer. Now, I will point this out. In the last scenario, um, Luke Robinson had to go through the core of the moon to get from the dark side of the moon to the light side of the moon, and he swam through like an inky black kind of liquid slime, which sounds an awful lot like an ocean of pitch to me. Pitch, of course, being sort of like tar. Choose an investigator to take control of the set-aside Richard Upton Pickman story asset. If he leaves play, remove him from the game. That's fine. Let's have a look at Mr. Pickman. Oh my god, does he have health? <gasps> you beautiful son of a gun. Oh, look how dapper he is! Look at how dapper this ghoul is! Oh, can people see me? realize I haven't actually been... <laughs> Look how dapper he is! He's an ally and a ghoul and an artist! Exhaust Richard Upton Pickman. Choose a ghoul enemy at your location and attach it to him face down. Action. Exhaust him. Fight. You attack with a base of five. Instead of its standard damage, this attack deals damage equal to the number of face down encounter cards attached to Richard Upton Pickman. <laughs> okay. So this guy's coming with us. This, like, city slicker artist ghoul. He's coming with us. And every time we encounter a ghoul, he can be like, Hey, get behind me, buddy. Like, we're, we're going along with Tony Morgan and uh, Randolph Carter. I don't trust me. You're, you're going to love it. And the <laughs> that is true. This is what a red cap looks like. I mean, less lizardy, probably, but that's fair. I'm thrilled. And we have health soak. Even better. Um, what was the next thing? Put each set-aside Veil location into play. Okay. I think they're labeled Veil locations, so I'm just going to drop them all here in a big pile. Uh, okay. So this is connected to the Hourglass, which is the Crag of the Ghouls. Uh, then there's... Oh, God. Okay. So this is the Crag of the Ghouls. The Crag of the Ghouls is connected to yellow, circle, and equal sign. Uh, so I guess I'll put them on each side. Not that one. Okay. I'm just going to do this for now, and we'll figure out where they kind of go in a moment. So it's connected to the Sea of Bones... Well, that's great news. And the Veil of Panath. Okay. And then there's also this Peaks of Thok, which have zero clues on it. Okay. Um, so this is connected to these two. Uh, okay, let's see. The Sea of Bones is connected to something bone. It's connected to the crag and the equal sign and the star. Okay, oh, I see. So these are kind of all interconnected. Let's do this then, because I think it's going to be like this. So this the veil of the Sea of Bones is connected to everything. The veil of Panath is connected to Hourglass, the Yellow Circle, the Black Star, and the Cross, which doesn't exist yet. And then the peaks are connected to these two. Okay, cool. So we've set up our locations. Let's have a quick look at these locations. Before we go there, the Crag of Ghouls. First treachery drawn during the Mythos phase by an investigator. This location gains surge. Uh, it's got two clues, but it's veiled, so maybe it's there's something on the other side. The Sea of Bones. After you discover a clue at the Sea of Bones, flip it over. Surge. Surge. It's got victory one. They all have victory one. The Veil of Panath. Veiled. Well, sure, it's the Veil. What? <laughs> While there are clues remaining on Veil of Panath, investigators cannot play cards or commit cards to skill tests. 
Wow. Okay, so in other words, to get that clue, I can't commit cards to it. I have to just take the test and and smash it. And then there's also the, the Peaks of Thok. Test Agility 5 to attempt to scale the treacherous peaks. Flip this card and over. I'm not doing that. Like, absolutely not. Um, Tony, Tony can maybe, you know, do a little climbing. Also, look at this. When you leave Peaks of Thok, test Agility 2 to climb down safely if you fail, take a damage. Like, absolutely not. We're not going there. Okay, sorry. Back to the act deck. This is a long scenario, apparently. Find each card from the Striking Fear Encounter set. Remove them from the game. Shuffle the set aside Terror of the Veil and Night... God damn it. Night Gaunts into the encounter deck. Fine. Uh, I need to quickly look up what's in the Striking Fear set. It's a core set. I think it's Frozen in Fear, um, Grasping Hands, maybe... Uh, maybe not Grasping Hands. What's the other one? The horror one that does horror? It's coming back to me. Core set. I'm just having a quick look at what this is. Gathering that. Uh, Striking Fear has three cards in it. Rotting Remains, Frozen in Fear, and Dissonant Voices. Okay. Oh, great. So those are leaving? Oh, yeah. Oh, you love to see it. Okay, those are leaving the encounter deck. Ah, <gasps> thrilling. I mean, obviously. Um, what was the other one? The other ones were Dissonant Voices. That's not that bad if you're already set up. And then um, Rotting Remains. Whoops. <laughs> Phew! All right, get the heck out of here. And then we are putting into play... What is it? Uh, Night Gaunts and Terror of the Veil. Oh God, don't look, Scott, don't look. Yeah. Okay. Whew, that was a long one. All right, Crosshair, we're back. Act 2A, The Descent. The way to the veil below is treacherous. You will have to climb down from a place Pikmin calls the Crag of the Ghouls, where the creatures cast the discarded remains of their macabre meals. Wow. Literally, they just throw their bones down into the... Oh, my God. Littering! Littering! You can only imagine what the depths must be like. After an enemy with one or more clues is defeated, take control of the clues. That's great. Find the way to the Sea of Pitch. You will be instructed when to advance. Find the way to the Sea of Pitch. Well, the Crag of the Ghouls is veiled... The Sea of Bones is a bad stuff place, right? Because it says when you discover clues, flip it over. So maybe I'm not going to go there. The Veil is also veiled, and it says you can't play cards or commit cards to tests when there's still a thing. Barbecue rules for Hicks. I mean, actually, you do both make a good point. You know, bones do break down <laughs> over time. It's not like it's not like beer cans, although I imagine you might also do that. Okay, find your way to the Sea of Pitch. Well, I don't, I have one action left. I don't really want to move to the crag because then if I draw a treachery, it's going to gain search. So instead, yeah, make beer cans out of bones. Exactly. What? <laughs> what am I going to do instead? Draw a card? Man, I'm drawing a lot of cards. It's kind of fun. Yeah, draw a card. Oh, excellent. I'll take it. We should use bones for more of our stuff. <laughs> Grotzer's getting an idea. We go into upkeep where we draw a card, gain a resource. <gasps> Intel report. I can pay for two clues. I can't use this on the veil, though, because the veil specifically says you can't play cards or commit cards to skill tests. So I specifically have to, I don't know, use well connected, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's go back to the Mythos phase, where we go to one out of four Doom again, and we draw an encounter card. Hope it's not too bad. Ugh. Ugh. Crosshair. Ugh. I mean, it would be so thematic, but it would also be so horrible. Tony, right, back to the story. Tony's got Randolph, who has managed to link up with uh, this venerable ghoul, Richard Upton Pickman, who is absolutely thrilled to be accompanying them down into the depths to assist him with all of their ghoulish needs. This is... Oh, gosh. 
Okay, but ah, but it's a ravenous ghoul. Ooh, the sight of the thing raised the question: Do we eat to live, or do we live to eat? Now, this is a ghoul. However, free trigger. Choose a ghoul and attach it to him, face down. What's up, Richard Upton Pickman? Literally, is just like. Oh, hey, Tom, uh, you know, I know you want to eat these guys because they've got very tasty flesh, like I know, but trust me when I say you're going to instead want to come with us because there's going to be even tastier things to eat down there. Boom. Richard is going to go on top. Look at that. That was a free trigger fast action to get rid of a big beefy enemy. I'll take it. One resource from Lone Wolf. Okay, um, let's do it. Let's move down into the Crag of the Ghouls. At last he discerned above him the projecting edge of the great Crag of the Ghouls, whose vertical sides he could not glimpse. It's got two clues on it. Um, so I could just buy them. I can also test twice, but then I couldn't leave this location. So I feel like I'm just gonna buy the clues. <laughs> It's a bit lame, eh? Uh, obviously, the intel report here, this is naturally... Um, uh, na naturally, this is uh, Randolph Carter and Richard Upton Pickman working together, try to point Tony in the correct direction, try to tell him, you know, oh, you know, let's go examine this sort of region, let's do this, let's do that. I'll take the two clues. Clears the location. Feels great. Veiled. Let's flip it. I don't know what it does. Scouting the veil. That feels good. Looking out over the barren veil, you get a sense for the threats that dwell below. Underneath the plateau upon which you stand, a forest of obscene pale fungi extends for miles. Ah, beyond that is a great heap of bones, like an ocean pouring forth in all directions. You swear you can see something crawling or worming its way along the surface of the bones, but perhaps it's just your imagination. We're not going there. That sounds terrible. In the distance, great sharp peaks of stone loom over the veil. Black winged creatures fly around the summit, searching for prey. Ugh. You see no sign of this ocean of pitch that Pikmin described, though you do notice a wide cavern opening along a wall of stone to the right of the veil below. Look at the top two cards of the encounter deck. You, <laughs> you may discard up to half of them. Return the rest of the top in any order. Okay, so obviously in a multiplayer game, this is really good because it's look at the top two per investigator. So technically I could just plan my next two turns, but I could also discard one of them. Okay, one of them is a monster. Not so bad. And one of them is lit. What the heck is this? Lit by death fire. This is metal AF. Am I doing metal correctly? This looks metal to me. Lose a resource. If you're at a veil location, just discard a card from your hand. Each investigator at depth's location loses an action. What the heck are veil and depth locations? These Oh, these are all veil look. I see. Okay, so there's going to be depth's locations as well. Uh, well, I don't like this so much. I'm going to discard it. It's not so bad. Yeah, I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to... And then I'm going to put the hunting night gaunt back on top. Because I know... It's true, Crosshair, but that, you know, the monster is going to pay for my pay for my skills or whatever. Um, I think it's okay. I think we can deal with it. I think we can deal with it. Flip this card back over. Oh, uh, for the remainder of the game, ignore the text on Crag of Ghouls, which is the, you know, thing where you draw, where you search. Flip this card back over. Okay, so now I can just stay here. Or I could move to the Vale. Okay, cl clearly they're trying to tell me something bad happens in the Sea of Bones. Something good happens at the Vale of Panath. No Serge anymore. <laughs> Serge! <laughs> I need money to... Yeah. Okay, I can't commit cards if I'm at the Vale. So maybe I don't want to go to the Vale yet. Maybe I want to deal with this thing first. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here at the crag, let the Night Gaunt come to me, kill it, pow pow, get all the resources and things that I need, then go to the Vale when I'm ready. 
So last action. I'm just going to draw a card. Or am I just going to draw a card? I'm just going to draw a card. <laughs> hey, Vicious Blow. That's a good card. Enemy phase. Nothing happens. There's no enemies on the board. Upkeep. We draw a card. We gain a resource. Hmm. We're taking the initiative here. This is exciting. And we go to two out of four Doom and we draw. Drum roll, please. Oh, f screaming out of the sky. One of the creatures, the winged creatures that he saw flying around the peaks to the south. Exactly, Crosshair. Um, it, it, it is indeed a night god. A creature of darkness. I'm going to put two... Ah, kittens. I'm going to put two bounties on it. Just the one. I'm going to put two bounties on it. Investigation brings us a resource from Lone Wolf. And we're ready to shoot. Okay, so here's the deal. I really want to have this hunting night gaunt get away. So, or not get, not get away specifically. Uh, oh, sorry, I should mention. Hunting night gaunt is a 3-4-1 hunter. Um, while attempting to evade it, you have to double the negative modifier on revealed chaos tokens. So. Your, my nund, oh, your nun deck. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long, Crosshair. I was like, y you're what? <laughs> I'm sorry, who's nund? <laughs> well, that is, you know, there are cards that are like, look at the top three cards in the encounter deck, you know. There's an um, investigator that's been unofficially released. Yeah, I don't think she's been officially released. Like, sorry. The alternate version of her has been released, and I think her official version is going to come in maybe the next box or whatever. She's a mystery writer, which is hilarious to me. Um, but her, yeah, your nun deck. Exactly. Oh, boy. Um... But her whole ability is like when you look at cards from a deck, look at an additional one, and you can discard or draw one of them or something like that. So it, it's something to that effect, which basically means anytime you look at the encounter deck, you're actually looking at two and you can just start chucking stuff out. It's great. All right, hunting night gaunt. It is time to die. I'm going to I'm going to fight with the mouser. Let's party. Um, I have I have to spend an ammo from it. As the beast comes screaming out of the sky, Tony was expecting it. So he stands up, he aims. Although, is aiming really important with something like a Mauser? And let's go a, a hail of bullets trying to puncture the wings of the creature. It's got three combat. I have six combat. I really want to succeed. So I'm going to commit to take the initiative to go up to nine. Wild. Oh, or... I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. Yeah, let's do it. Nine, nine to three. Wow, big success. Okay, the bullets... Uh, I can ready it if I succeed by two or more, so I will. The bullets puncture the wings of the hunting night gaunt, and it crashes into the ground. Its claws at the ready... Um, I should go to put some two damage on it here. It's claws at the ready, but so is Tony. I'm going to fire again with the Mauser. This time I am only six to three, uh, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Six to three. Let's party. Ooh, okay. What's that? Minus three? Minus three. So I don't succeed by two, but I do kill it. This is great news. So the Hunting Knight Gaunt goes down in a hail of... I, I've said hail of bullets, like, so many times now, but... What are you gonna do? Oh, and I can exhaust Randolph to draw two cards. Whee! Okay, hang on. Now I have to figure out what's going on. Okay. The, the creature's claws are out as it struggles to get to its feet, but Tony is already up in its face and executes it at close range. Now, I used Randolph to draw two cards because I revealed... An Elder Thing token, and one of the things I revealed was my weakness. This is Tony's Quarry. Spawn at the locatious, the locatious, the location farthest from Tony Morgan. Well, that's, I mean, wee, that's way up here. 
After it enters play, place a Doom on it, and then place a Bounty on it. Well, shnikes. The thing is, the, the intention is for you to have to go and deal with this, but naturally, I'm not going back. I mean, I don't want to go back. Maybe I have to. Uh, it's got a Doom. That sucks. That really sucks, but what are you going to do? Um, okay. Nailed it. And I drew Dario Elamin. So I can't... Oh, and I defeated an enemy, so I'm going to use Glory to draw two cards. Why the hell not? Yeah, that's it. Crosshair. And I'm already on two Doom, so actually this is the end of the round, unfortunately. That's okay. It's okay. Excuse me. I think we're doing all right. Tony is blasting his way through the underworld. I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go for the Veil of Panath. Try to get the clue off of it. I don't, like, like part of me obviously wants to go into the Sea of Bones and get the clue because it's a victory point. But then it says, after you discover one or more clues at the Sea of Bones, flip it over. What's going to be on the other side? Probably some sort of horrible monster that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> I just don't want to deal with it. What do I do, though? I don't... Oh, sorry. I'm actually just going to rotate this so I, re I remember there's a ghoul under there. I don't need the... Oh, I do want the experience. I don't know if I need the clues, though. And it would get me more resources from bounties. If if it's a monster that's under there. Which, like, I'm, like sorry. I'm sure it's a monster that's under there. <laughs> No. I, um, what do we think? Hang on. Let's have a look here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six experience already. That feels pretty good. Six experience. Maybe one more experience is worth it. Let's do it. F it. Um, uh, what if it... No, it doesn't matter. I'm going to move third action, fourth action. I'm doing it. This is crazy. I'm doing it. I'm going to investigate the Sea of Bones. It has two Shroud. I have four Intellect because of Randolph. And I'm going to commit... Per... No, I'm just going to test. No, I'm just going to test. Four to two. Good enough. We get the clue. As Tony moves down into the Sea of Bones, he is... It's true, Crosshair. The whole doomed team. Um, Tony, you know, saw the cavern opening over at the Vale, and he's like, but what if this thing that's here come... We, I need more information. Like, what if this thing is going to come and kill us later? After you discover one or more clues at Sea of Bones, flip it over. There was nothing anywhere but blackness and horror and silence and bones. Traversing this canyon of cadavers and monstrous remains is laborious enough, but it is the churning and digging below the surface that causes you to hate this awful place. What sort of monstrosity could span the entirety of this ocean of bones? Your answer presents itself, oh, as you come across a great pit in the ravine. It is swallowing the bones and scraps of rotten meat like a whirlpool. It's Dune! When you reach the base of the tunnel and realize its true purpose, a shudder courses through you. It was made by an enormous creature, the thing that dwells beneath, sorry, below the Sea of Bones. If there is no d dole tunnel, can we say D-hole? <laughs> I'm going to call it a dole tunnel, but we all know, we're all thinking D-hole now. If there's no dole tunnel, tunnel at this location, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a dole tunnel and attach it. If able, shuffle the encounter deck. Okay. This is a dole tunnel. G -g -g Great. I guess I'll look at what that does momentarily. If slithering dole is in play, move it to this location and add two clues. Otherwise, oh no. Search the encounter deck, discard pile, and victory display for slithering dole spawned at this location. Exhausted and with two clues on it. Flip this card back over. Okay. No. 
horror flashback from when you were a teenager when I read a book about a small town with tunneling monsters below it. I had a nightmares of those tunnels. <laughs> Didn't we all? I mean, good God. All right, let's... Oh, jeez. Okay, well, it's exhausted for now. So let's have a look at what I've done. What have I done? The Dole Tunnel... Ugh. Um... It was not in play, so nothing... Okay, uh, attach it to a location at least... No, no, no. I, I don't actually resolve it. It just said connect it here. Okay, it doesn't do anything. Attach Dole Tunnel to a location at least two connections away from the nearest Dole Tunnel or your location. I did. If Slithering Dole is in, in the victory display, spawn it. Okay, it wasn't, though. That's fine. Slithering Dole is a... Ooh, a monster. An elite. 353. Nearest, okay, it spawns, it spawns here. It's a massive hunter, victory one. While it is moving, ah, all locations with an attached tunnel are considered to be connected. Okay, so it can come in and out of the tunnels. It does one damage and one horror, actually. I mean, it kind of sucks. I'm going to be wasting a bit of time floating around here, but like, maybe this isn't so bad. Enemy phase, nothing happens because in the upkeep phase, ah, a uh, massive trunk? What they, how did they describe it? I'm, I'm flipping the card back over to reread their description. An enormous creature, the thing that dwells beneath, below, the sea of bones. I keep saying beneath. Uh, the slithering dole is obviously some sort of horrible uh, trunk-like appendage. Perhaps it is an appendage of an even larger creature? It seems to grind bones and meat to survive. Uh, this is similar to the Sarlacc. Oh, thank you, Crosshair. <laughs> yes, please. I'll put a bounty on it. I want to keep one just in case. Uh, yeah. Upkeep. Oh, God. Draws me a card and gains me a resource. Scene of the crime? Oh, that doesn't help right now. I'm going to rearrange my hand really quick here. All the skills go to the end. The assets go to the beginning. Look at all these beautiful skills. Ooh, thank you, Crosshair. Bounty. All right. Okay, D-hole. You're going D down. Three out of four Doom, except it's actually four, because thanks so much, the creature from Tony's past somehow has advanced the machinations of the terrors down here. Again, you are shaken by a sudden feeling of instability as reality shifts and bends around you. Each investigator must discard a card at random from their hand or lose two resources. I'm going to lose two resources. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lose two resources. That's fine. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Not happy about it, but not mad about it. Place a damage on the scenario reference card. And then if there are five or more, that's the end, I'm pretty sure. So we're up to three. So skulls are now minus three, which is not, not great. Drawn encounter card. A ghoul minion. Oh, you love to see it. Rising up out of the sea of bones, also screaming along with the noise being made by the slithering dole, is a ghoul. Uh, a, monstro a monstrosity that bears and gnashes its teeth until, of course, it sees the venerable ghoul, Richard Upton Pickman, who obviously is very impressive to people. Uh, free trigger, I'm just going to take this ghoul. Right? It's ghouls, right? Choose a ghoul and attach him. No problem. It's a free trigger, so it just kind of happens. <laughs> kind of amazing. Kind of amazing. So now, if I exhaust Richard, I can fight and do two damage. But I, I can't yet. Anyway, okay. Background, investigation phase. I gain a resource. Let's party. This beast is absolutely devastatingly massive, and this is only a part of it. Tony realizes he's not going to be able to kill it. He doesn't even know where it starts or where it ends. But if he can frighten it off with enough noise and uh, pain and uh, damage, then at the very least, you know, he'll be able to... Well, that's it. He'll be able to scare it off. Let's fight. Let's use the mouser. Uh, I'm going to fire some automatic gunfire at the Slithering Dole. It has three combat? So I'm six to three. I'm going to put a vicious blow into this to be seven to three. Let's do it. Seven to three. <sighs> <laughs> so, so 
disappointing. So disappointing. You gotta fight for your right to horror. Hi, Gunner. Ye oh, wait. No, hang on. I did say seven to three. <laughs> I, sorry, I, was, I don't know why I was thinking six. Nailed it. Okay, great. So that's three damage. Boom. The bullets from the Mouser just keep spewing. <gasps> oh, Sclerticus. Yay. Hi. I, I wouldn't say it was so hard. Thank you very much. It was pretty bad, though, wasn't it? May I tell people, Peace Glarticus, in the past you've been very angry when I've outed you uh, in terms of various uh, real-life things. No one's going to dox you here, but just let me know. Otherwise, people will just assume that our adventure later this evening could mean anything. thats I'm just It's not a threat. Exactly. It's not a threat. It's just a promise. <laughs> All right. Three damage on the Slytherin D-hole. Absolutely incredible. No, Crosshair! Oh, you know, right. Crosshair, we won. We won. We, I mean, the universe still ends, right? So, <laughs> did, did we really win? But it did go well. Somehow, I chalk that up to Peace Glarticus. No, we have started looking at Edge of the Earth, the newest campaign, the mountains in Antarctica. It's... Would you say it's going, Peace Glarticus? I feel like we did okay. It was pretty touch and go. <laughs> Thanks, reading. Oh, everybody shows up for the sex jokes. Where have you been the whole scenario? <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. Okay, <laughs> let's party. I need to take out this slithering dole. I have five combat. I'm gonna throw in another vicious blow and I'm gonna try to kill it. Here it comes. Meow. I'm gonna try to, uh, sorry. Tony unleashes his whole clip uh, at the beast. Some of the, most of the bullets bounce off its thick hide, but some of them end up inside the end of this horrible appendage thing. Uh, and it, it writhes and flails around. Um, Tony's out of bullets, but for now, I mean, but like as he's going to reload, he's rushing up to it and trying to pitch rocks into the end of it. Okay, going pretty well. It's hard to tell. I think we did about as good as we could. Yeah, I feel the same. We made some questionable story decisions, as one does, adds the crosshair, which I fully agree with. Reading's been drinking tea and modifying inspiration posters into ad hoc stupid things. Where the hell have you been, Reading? Show me these posters. I mean, don't actually, if you don't, uh, unless you want to, of course. Uh, let's fight, let's fight. I'm six to three. Okay, good enough. It's good enough. That's two damage. So I get the two clues. And the dole... It doesn't explode, but it retreats into its tunnel. Cowed for now. Now, I really hope to not draw something that will then... You know... Um, cause me to have to deal with it again. I'm gonna go to the Veil now. That was good, actually. That was okay. That went okay. Yeah, that went okay. Tony's leaving the Sea of Bones, having sent the creature on its way, well, cowed it somewhat. Uh, and here at the Vale of Panath, there's nothing that stands between him and the strange, mysterious cavern in the distance that he saw, which is maybe his ultimate destination. While there are clues remaining, you can't play cards or commit cards, so I have to just test four to four, but I can be well connected at six to four. That's a thing I'm allowed to do, so let's do it. Six to four. We're trying to get this last clue on this location. Come on, Vale. Oh, no. All right, all right. All right, Vale of Panath. Keep your secrets. Enemy phase, no enemies. Upkeep. We draw cards. We... Oh, money, eh? I can't play it right now because I'm on the Vale of Panath. I can't play cards or commit cards. So basically my hand is just absolutely worthless. Okay. Music? Still playing? Yeah, good. We go to one out of four Doom again. And we're going to draw an encounter card. As we, uh, as Tony and Randolph and Richard Upton Pickman attempt to navigate their way across this veil, the end of the Sea of Bones, and the beginning 
of something worse, presumably. Oh, it's a hunting night gaunt. Well, nothing I can do about that. Nothing I can do about that. We'll put our bounty on it, I guess. <laughs> Move back. Gain a resource from uh, Lone Wolf. You think you're making a shop previews? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you amend that sentence if you need to, reading, because it doesn't make sense to me. But I'll let you do it. Um, if if it is indeed some sort of digital shop where you're making modified inspiration posters, I could use one for my house. Hey, let's fight! I have a bullet left on the oh god. I only have one bullet left on the Mauser. Come on, let's fight. Yeah. So I have uh burp. Yeah. Oh, 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 I see. Making a shop. Previews ensuing. Okay, great. Sorry. Oh, now I understand reading. Oh, it's just the comma. I understand. All right, let's fight. I have six combat to three against the Hunting Night Gaunt. Let's try to shoot this thing. I can't commit cards or play cards, so you know how this is going to go down. Six to three. Good enough. Not good enough for succeed by two, but good enough for some damage. And now I guess I'm going to fight it twice? Just punch it in its little head. Ugh. If I take damage and horror, like, it's really not the end of the world. It kind of just slows me down. On the veil, of course, there's nowhere to hide. And as Tony starts to traverse it, another creature from the nearby peaks descends on him. He manages to, once again, use the last of his bullets trying to uh, deal with the creature and it, it's still in the air, fluttering as it comes down for the kill he's going to attempt, second action uh, I'm going to attempt to just, you know bring it down fully 5 to 3 I can't commit anything, so let's just party that's good, that's a damage uh, third action, let's try it again, 5 to 3 we're going to try to beat this hunting night gaunt okay Okay, good, 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 good. So we get the resource as uh, the bounty, and we kill the Night Gaunt. So now, last action, I'm very excited. We're going to try once again to reach the end of the Vale of Panath. I don't know what lies beyond. Perhaps it is this... <laughs> well, that worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Crosshair. Well, I can't commit anything, but like, oh. Well, okay. Thank you, Gunner. Sorry, there's a there's obviously quite a big delay between the chat and what's happening here in real time. Uh, but thank you. Um, or no, I shouldn't say the chat, just generally. Or maybe the good luck was meant for reading. Reading aloud. That's really great. Do you can see it as sort of a business or sort of just like a side thing that's kind of fun? Let's... What the hell? There we go. Well connected. Uh, okay, so I have four intellect. I'm trying to get this clue. Four to four plus three because of well connected all right luke it's wonderful that you're here thank you enjoy your food enjoy the cat enjoy pokemon sword bam see you later seven to four gotcha whoa so many zeros i'll take it and the question is do i flip this location how, how many clues do i have look at all these clues Look at all these clues! I, I can I can barely hold all these clues. <laughs> I mm, it's true. Gonna come at the worst possible time. If the investigators possess fewer than three clues, no, it's fine. If the investigators possess at least three clues, you venture out into the dark veil and attempt to map out the surroundings. With the knowledge you've accumulated, you know that the source of the disturbances within the underworld cannot be in this region. There must be another pathway, perhaps a cavern or a tunnel that leads from the veil to a place even deeper beneath the surface of the dreamlands. As you approach the great stone wall at the far end of the veil, you pick up a foul scent, ugh, like sulfur and tar. Ugh. You follow the stench until it leads you to a wide hole in the wall. Spend three clues, advance the act, flip this card back over. Don't mind if I do three clues. This is three clues, right? One, two... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, reading. If it Look, hey, look, and if it makes you happy, right? Like, that's how, that's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, okay, so we're advancing the act. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. 
act to be a way across. The hole becomes narrower and narrower as you make your way through to the other side of the stone wall. When you finally emerge, you find yourself at the shores of an enormous ocean of black tar. Pitch black tar, sorry. Webs of glowing violet energy spread across its surface, filling you with an uneasy dread. Could this be related to the horrors you witnessed in St. Mary's Hospital? Hmm. Just as you are beginning to wonder what to do next, you discover several rowboats of black wood moored in a nearby cove. The hull of each is carved with a strange insignia. Um, is this luck or providence? Isn't providence a kind? Like, providence was, like, provided to you by a higher power. Isn't that also kind of luck? <laughs> Either way, you are determined to set off across the sea and trace this madness to its source. Put each set-aside depth's location into play, shuffle the set-aside descent into the pitch, and agents of Atlachmacha into the encounter deck along with the discard pile. Okay. Well, that's... Adding more cards is never nice. Uh, I don't want to look at that. The So, content warning. I believe the agents of Alat Natcha are spiders. So, just a heads up there. Okay. Uh, yes, actually, I'll probably get a drink myself. So, we'll... Yeah. Uh, no, no. I'll, I'll put the set-aside depths locations into play, and then I'll take a quick drink as well myself. Okay. So, the Sea of Pitch... They're all the same. Okay. Oh. Ah. The Sea of Pitch, they're all pluses, and so they're all connected to each other and to the Vale of Panath. Okay, great. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to make them a little fun little arrangement here. Providence is luck attributed to the divine, as opposed to the luck of your enemies, which is always blamed on, yeah, exactly. So they're all connected to each other. And they're all connected to the Vale of Panath. That's fine. Okay, cool. I don't know. I uh, I know I normally do a lot more of these, but I'm gonna take a very quick break. Um, refill some water, get a drink. I hope y'all do the same. Leave you with this spooky music as we explore the Sea of Pitch in just a moment. Back in a sec. Hello, welcome back once again to Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror, the card game, with a focus on roleplay and storytelling. Today, Tony Morgan ventures in underground, back above ground, and then underground again. <laughs> Turns out, being able to fight things when there's things to fight is pretty good. Okay, what do we got? <clears throat> um, we just finished our turn. I finished advancing the act. I haven't read Act 3A yet, Crosshair. Um, on today's show... Bounty hunters. <laughs> what are they? How do they work? So the Vale of Panath is connected to four different Sea of Pitch locations. They're each veiled. Ugh. They each have X Shroud. X is the number of damage tokens on the scenario reference card. Blah. Deep in the vacuous expanse lies another dimension. Will you take the plunge? <laughs> no thanks. Uh, but they each have a clue. And they're each veiled. Act 3A. The Black Expanse. As you traverse the tar-like sea of pitch, you begin to discern patterns in the unearthly web that glows beneath its surface. And then it's the same thing. It says, forced after an enemy with one or more clues on it is defeated, take control of the clues. Find the source of the distortion. You will be instructed when to advance. Well, okay. Okay, so what it wants me to do is go get the clue off. Exactly, exactly, Crosshair. I guarantee one of them says something like, you know, take damage, flip this card over, sucker. One of them's like, spawn a big beefcake here. Bleh, sorry, sucker. And then one of them says, oh god, I don't know which is which anymore. But that's the end of my turn because, well, because it's the end of my turn. Uh, no enemies on the board, so we upkeep, draw a card, gain a resource. Oh, another gun! Yes, actually, please, Crosshair, and that, because I will, unless I have to deal with an enemy, Next turn, I will move and try to get a clue. So yeah, uh, Crosshair, I'll let you know in advance. There's four locations and they will be one, sorry, sorry, yeah, one, no. One starts at north. One, two, three, and four. But then, oh, great, well, that was easy. <laughs> Perfect, we're going to the far side of the Sea of Pitch. Perfect. Okay, so we can draw another gun. 
That's great news. I honestly might play that out before I do anything else. We go to two out of four Doom. Did I shuffle the encounter deck? Good lord. And we draw an encounter card. Hunt Aghast. Oh, this isn't a ghoul. Okay. So Hunter, it preys on the most damage. Two, two, three. After it enters a location with a Gug, ready each Gug and deal a damage to Hunting Gast. Oh, man. Why is there Hunting Gast all the way down here? <gasps> I think it's time for Richard Upton Pickman to make a case. Uh, we get um, a resource from Lone Wolf when we start. And I think... I'm very excited here. Out of the darkness comes uh, a malformed but humanoid creature. Not unlike a ghoul, at least to Tony's eyes. He hasn't yet found another weapon in his coat, and he's currently, you know, oaring one of the... Um, He's clearly, he's currently, like, you know, propelling one of the uh, ships or preparing one of them across the Sea of Pitch. But, to his, to his credit and to his advantage, one Richard Upton Pickman, I'm going to, I'm going to exhaust him to, uh, oh, I don't have any bounties left. Oh, man. Oh, the whole point of Tony. Oh, jeez. Okay. Richard Upton Pickman exhausts, fight, a fight with a base of five. It deals damage equal to the number of face-down encounter cards under him, or attached to him, and there are two. So it'll deal two damage, five to two. We're just going to fight. Um, Richard is going to lead his ghoul army and just tear this ghast limb from limb, and hopefully it won't fight back too hard. Five to two, please. Well, that is... Hey, gonna... Well, that's really annoying. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, I just want to I just want to punch its stupid face. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move and take an attack of opportunity. I'm going to move to the sea of pitch. I'm taking an attack of opportunity. I'm putting it all on Randolph. Here's the thing. I don't love it, but the thing about the veil is that I oh! I could oh jeez, hang on. While there are clues remaining on Veil of Panath, can't play cards or commit cards. Now, Gunner, do you mean a crossover with my extended universe characters? Because that's exciting. Is that what you mean? Oh my god, that could be fun. Mm. There isn't a Doctor character yet in Arkham, but if they do ever release one... I mean, there is a Doctor in the universe. They haven't released him for the LCG yet, but I think that would be really fun. Okay, hang on. So I tried to punch him, and it didn't work. I can play cards and commit cards here. So I think what I do instead, actually, is just play the gun out over the Mauser. There we go. What about Stryker, hey? Uh, I can tell you exactly who Stryker is, Gunner. Here he comes. Uh, I'm going to show you the image of Mr. Roland Banks, baby. This is Chief Inspector Stryker. Roland Banks, The Fed, as voiced by Carlo Mastroni in the uh, Mansions of Madness video game. Uh, <laughs> someone else that is on this, uh, someone on this very cast right now also voiced one of the characters in Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace. I <laughs> there it is, Gutter. Perfect. And there's Nancy Drew. Oh, hello. My name is Nancy Drew. Oh. I like, she loves her books, apparently. Oh, Nancy Drew. All right, all right, all right. I'm putting these guys back. Okay. That's actually, Crosshair, a pretty good shout, too, because um, Daisy's a great investigate, like, uh, a great seeker and a great, um, what am I trying to say here? She's great at, like, getting clues and at having tomes that does do stuff for the team. Hmm. Okay, I played out the gun. Richard did not succeed, so instead we're going to take this matter into our own hands and shoot with the gun! The Mauser. I'm fighting at 6 to 2 against this ghastly ghast. Ghastly ghast. 6 to 2, please. Thank you very much. Okay, I succeeded by 2. I don't need to ready the gun, so I'll gain a resource and I kill the friggin' thing. There you go! That's how it's done. Enemy phase. There are no more enemies. Upkeep. We draw a card. We gain a resource. It's the Crystallizer of Dreams. 
I don't really want to shuffle a guardian into my deck right now. So I might not do that. All right. Mythos, three out of four. Time is running very short, and we need to get to the Sea of Pitch, like, stat. Draw an encounter card. <gasps> the Pitch Spider spawns at any Sea of Pitch location. Oh, is that a spider made of, like, tar? Ugh, cover. Co covered in. Swarming X. X is the amount of damage on the card. When it attacks you, it deals either its damage or its horror instead of both. Well, that's interesting. Now, it has Swarming 3. Uh, ugh, so I'm going to just straight up put it somewhere where I don't want to go if I don't have to. What are they? They're, they're 2 combat and 1 health, so a bullet would kill 2 of them at once. I'm going to put them up here and just hope that they don't, like, come to kill me. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be... That would honestly be disastrous. I think I put, should put them... No, it's fine. Is my music still running? Yeah. Let's go back to that music. Okay. We're back around... Was that the Mythos phase? Yes, it was the... I uh, gained a resource from Lone Wolf. Okay. That's correct, Crosshair. Somewhere to the north of the Sea of Pitch, rising out of the out of the ocean of Tar, are eight-legged beasts. Now we know the progress card is north, but we did roll west. Exactly, Crosshair. You gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna move into this Sea of Pitch. It has uh, a Shroud of X. X is the number of damage tokens, which is currently three. Ugh. Um, I need to get this clue. And then I need to see what it says on the other side. I hope it doesn't mess me up too bad. Um, I have four intellect. Four to three is pretty good. But I'm going to commit perception to be six to three. Just to avoid that, that good old minus three in the bag. Six to three, please. Tony is venturing out further and further into the ocean, trying to follow the strange web of energy that he doesn't truly understand, but it seems to be leading somewhere to some sort of nexus. Six to three, please. <laughs> That's a big success. Okay, we get the clue. We draw a card from Perception. That's, that's pretty good. And now, it's veiled, so I'm gonna flip it over. Ready, Crosshair? Sp <sighs> the, the title here is Spider Infested Waters. From the depths of the pitch black ocean, the creatures suddenly emerge. They are similar to spiders in shape, but that is where the similarities end. Their bodies appear to be made from the same tarry substance as the ocean itself, and their eyes glow crimson red in the dark fog over the sea. The spiders surround your vessel and attempt to pull it, and you, into the depths. Quick show of hands in the chat. Can anyone hear what's happening out there? There is quite a wild cat fight happening. Thank you, Crosshair. Don't, yeah, roll a different d10 next time, please. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top until a spider enemy is discarded. Excellent. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Spawn that enemy here with a clue on it. Oh. <laughs> Wait, it's discard cards from the top? Discard cards from the top. Okay. Well, I hope I discard all the really crappy enemies. Oh god, the dole tunnels, the grasping hands, the night gaunts, everything! Oh my god. Ancient e I'm just kind of like, that's a gug. <laughs> that's a spider enemy. <laughs> it's a huge, beefy boy. It gets a clue. Oh god, alright. Spawn it here with a clue on it. Flip this card back over. No problem. This is the Grey Weaver. Oh, it has a victory point. The Grey Weaver is a 4-5-3 enemy hunter. While it's ready, each investigator at its location can't take move actions. So you can't even move away from it. This beast rears up out of the ocean and threatens to tip the rowboat over as Tony reaches out and attempts desperately to try to fight it. I'm going to shoot this thing. 
Is that the right play? It's definitely the right play. I'm going to shoot this thing, um, and I'll try to soften it up so I can get it next turn. Taking damage and horror, that's for sure. Uh, let's do that. Okay, fighting. Six to four. I don't like those odds so much. I'm committing 21 or bust for a combat icon. Seven to four. Shoot, 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 and shoot! All right, good. So I didn't succeed by two, but I did succeed. So two damage goes on the Grey Weaver. I don't have my extra action because I don't have any bounties left because I am I burned them so hard. Hmm, and Richard Upton Pikmin can help too. Excellent. In the enemy phase, the beast rears back out of the water and manages to only get a small swipe in. But it is look like looking into... It's hard to even put into words. Tony Morgan has seen many horrible things in his time, but a creature made of almost pure darkness, a creature that will haunt his nightmares forever, is what is staring in front of him, staring at him. Crosshair, I love it. We're going to go south next. Uh, I desperately hope that I get there because I have to take the damage and horror first. So I'm going to put a damage on Richard. I'm going to put a horror on Randolph, and I'll put another horror on me. It's fine. Upkeep phase. We draw a card. We gain a resource. Switchblade! Well, maybe I'll just play that out, hey? It's fast? It's fast, but you, you can't just play it whenever. You have to play it during your turn. Okay. Mythos phase. Oh, we go to four out of four doom, and we... Inc ah! Discard a card at random from your hand, or lose two resources. I will lose two resources. Fine by me. Should be good. Or rocks fall. Oh. Shovel the encounter, discard pile into the encounter deck. Damn it. Place a damage on the scenario reference card. Okay. So, we're at four damage on the scenario reference card. That means skulls are minus four. It also means if we get to the end of this Doom track, that's it. It Well, we progress to Resolution 2, whatever that means. There's only so many locations, so it... Maybe it's not that bad? I don't know. I still have to draw an encounter card. Let's do it. Come on, hit me up. What do you got? Grasping hands. You know what? It's not the worst card, but I really can't afford to take damage. It's kind of the... Oh, I could just come and take the initiative to it. Because I'm testing two to three. How do I want to do this? I don't want to fail and take damage, that's for sure. Could I just cancel it? What's worse? Oh, like Frozen in Fear. Oh, no, that's not in the deck anymore. Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm playing Counter Espionage and I'm paying four. Uh, a lucky shout from Randolph and Richard alert Tony to the fact that additional spider tentacles or, or spider arms are coming out from the pitch behind him and manages to avoid them. I get to draw a card instead. It's Faustian Bargain. Doesn't do anything for me right now. That's okay. And we go back to the investigation phase. We're getting a resource from Lone Wolf. Okay. I have to kill this Grey Weaver. Uh, I'm going to spend one to play Switchblade. It's fast. <laughs> Wah! So, gun in one hand, Switchblade in the other. Richard Upton Pikmin and the ghouls are beating down on this spider, trying desperately to get it to just, you know, get out of here, basically. Um, I am going to... No, I'm not. I'm going to use the gun first. Because the gun benefits me if I do... If I succeed by a lot. So, six to four, and I'm going to commit. take the initiative. Obviously... Tony is taking the initiative to try to drive this creature off. Using the switchblade as a small distraction, he manages to finish reloading his weapon and fire off a round at the Grey Weaver. This is 9 to 4. Plus 1. Okay. That's good. So that's 2 more damage. Yeah, Gunner! Oh, I love this. Who's Grim? Or what is Grim, maybe? That's a good question. These are nice. Ooh! Yeah! Take that, the Grey Weaver. Oh, no, it makes sense, Gunner. 
Now, do I want to... I succeeded by two or more, so the Mauser can ready, or I can gain a resource. I think I'm just going to gain a resource. Because if I just fight with the Switchblade, I'm at five. If I fight with Richard, I'm also at a five. The Mauser at least gets me up to a six. So actually, no, I'm going to... Uh, no, I want to save the bullets on the Mauser. So, let us... Crosshair's right. Let's stab it in the butt. Um, I'm going to fight with the... Uh, whoops, sorry. This is action two. I'm fighting with the switchblade at five to four. I don't like those odds. There's not a lot I can do about it. Scene of the crime is... Oh, yes, there is. I can use Well Connected. So this puts me up to seven to four this time. Oh, Gunner. That's so kind. This is what I'm going for. This is the idea. The idea behind Doomed is not so much to play a card game. It's more about, I mean, it is obviously, but it's more about what stories come out of said card game. So Tony manages to fire off a salvo into the beast. It rears back and it's starting to slide into the sea of pitch. And he's gonna come in whoomp, with an overhanded stab into its brain. Let's try seven to four because of well-connected. Seven to four, please. <sighs> Delicious. It does a bunch of damage. I get the clue off of it. No big deal. And the Grey Weaver is defeated. And it goes into the victory display. And as Crosshair said, we will move, last action, south to the Sea of Pitch. I can get a clue for free here next turn with the scene of the crime, which is like so, so, so good right now. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. So, hmm. There you go. Plenty of XP. Yeah, well, that's true too, Crosshair. Enemy phase. Uh, do the pitch spiders ready? Or do they hunt? No, thank gosh. I really don't want to have to go there. And uh, upkeep phase, then we draw a card. We gain a resource. Oh, I have to take a horror. I'll put it on me. Ugh. It's perception. Did it shuffle? I'll shuffle again. Whoa, okay. Because here's now, now horror is starting to become a bit of a problem as well. <laughs> oh, God. We go to one out of four Doom, our last agenda, and we draw an encounter card. Taste of lifeblood. Obviously, the ghouls begin that are in the boat with uh, Richard Upton Pickman begin to feed on the carcass of the Grey Weaver as it floats in the Sea of Pitch. Test will three. For each point you fail by, place a clue on your location. Place a clue on the nearest enemy or take a damage. I don't mind one of those options, actually. So I'll just test three to three. Ooh, I don't want to fail, though. I really don't want to fail this. I'll tell you why in a moment. Yeah, I'll tell you why in a moment. Let's just commit um, to be five. Five to three. Oh, thank God. The reason I don't want to fail, I'll tell you why. I don't mind putting my clues on the pitch spiders because I don't really need, I have so many, I have eight clues or something ridiculous. Ten, what is that, 10 clues? No way. I have 10 clues. Oh, it's thinking that, oh, okay. It thinks that those ghouls are clues <laughs> somehow. <laughs> that doesn't make any kind of sense. Um, still. Eggs, yeah, so, exactly. It would be bad. Um, putting clues on the spiders wouldn't be bad, but take a look at the uh, elder thing. If you fail by two or more, choose a ready enemy at your location, moves to you, engages you, and attacks you. No, thank you. I don't want to take a billion damage. Okay, the taste of lifeblood does not make us sick to our stomach. We take a resource from Lone Wolf right here. Two resources. Scene of the crime, please. First action. This is a free clue. Awful location. And it's veiled, so I will flip. The ocean's waves are steady and slow, like rolling pits of sludge, but eventually you find a spot where the ocean is eerily still and all is silent. You peer over the edge of your boat and gaze into the depths. Somewhere in the black vastness below is your destination. Look at the other side of another copy of Sea of Pitch. Flip this card back over. Now, crosshair. I think that I should look at this north copy of Sea of Pitch, because then I can determine whether or not I have to go there. 
I know that's where I'm going to have to go. Like, I guarantee it. I feel very, very strongly about that. But I need to know before I bother going to the other place, right? Yeah, I mean, defeating this thing is going to be absolute garbage, but... We'll try it, I suppose. Let's look. Ex exactly. Well, that's why I'm looking at it. Okay, this one says... Spend clues to advance the act. I'm not going to read any further. That's obviously where I need to go. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. If I go to the pitch, to the, to the sea of pitch. Oh, it's true. I can read it, though. It's true. It's Well, it says look at. Yeah, fuck it. You're right. If you possess at least three clues... Text, 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 which I will read later. Spend three clues, flip this card back over, and advance the current act. So that is that is definitely where I need to go. Okay, cool. So, if I go there, I can shoot and hopefully kill a couple of them. Then, they deal either damage or horror. Kill Richard, I guess. I don't like it. But we have to, right? Tony! rows across, he knows where he has to go, and once more out of the depths spiders spiders everywhere it has three swarm cards on it um, I have one action left, which I'm going to use to fight, I'm going to spend a bullet from the mouser I wish I still had bounties left that would be really useful here, but what am I going to do? Now that's... No, no, hang on, Crosshair. I did have an action left. You were right, because I, I got the clue, I moved, and I have an action. You're absolutely right. Can I just get this clue, though, is the question. So hold up. I'm going to reset here. If I investigate, I have to take either four damage or four horror. If I take four damage, I die. If I take four horror, I die. Okay, so no, actually, that's not an option. <laughs> The the bullets fly! Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. The bullets fly as Tony attempts to clear out his destination. Uh, these guys have two combat, and I'm fighting at a six. So, you know, that's fine, right? Six to, six to two? Let's party. Six to two. Plus one. Uh, okay, so... Two, da uh, two damage, which kills two of the swarms. The spiders begin to fall beneath the hail of bullets. Uh, I'm not going to ready the mouser. I'm going to gain a resource because I don't need to ready the mouser. In the enemy phase, I take either two damage or two horror. Uh, I'm going to take two damage and kill Richard Upton Pikmin. Which puts these guys in the discard pile and removes him from the game. I don't, Crosshair. I'm sorry. This is a fake action here. Um, I I got a clue at the Sea of Pitch. I moved, and then I shot. This is um, an action that I can specifically use to engage or fight an enemy with bounties on it, and I'm all out of bounties. I know! Isn't that so sad? If there was a, if there was a character that just said, you have an extra action to fight, I mean, that would be, that would be really... Oh, no, I'm not going to do a side note. Right now, we're going to fight. So I killed Richard Upton Pikmin. Oh, God, they drag him off the boat, and he disappears beneath the waves. Upkeep, draw a card, gain a resource. Okay. Oh, my God, two out of four doom. Please don't fuck it up. A ghoul! Oh, you... S that's fine. Actually, that's actually... I think that's okay. Is it Okay. I can take an attack of opportunity from the ghoul. It's the spiders that are the problem. Also, how am I going to get the clue here? I'm just going to commit a bunch of cards to it. Okay. Fight. Mouser. Bang, 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 bang. We're going to fight with the mouser. We're going to kill these pitch spiders. Six to two. Here we go. <laughs> Somehow, one of the ghouls that was going to be pulled... Well, now that Richard Upton Pickman's been pulled down off into the sea, this ghoul turns on Tony and begins to try to eat him on the boat. Six to two, please. 
Good enough for me. Gain a resource because I succeeded by a bunch. And we kill the pitch spiders. Whoops. Done. Two damage. Second action. I, I kind of want to fight the ghoul minion. How am I going to get this clue? It's got four shroud. I can commit a bunch to it. I can commit a whole bunch to it, actually. So I'm... Ooh, could I just evade it instead? No, 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 that's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight with the switchblade. Five to two, plus three is eight to two to kill the school minion. It does cross here. You're absolutely right. Eight to two, please. It still succeeds by two. That is wild. Okay. The switchblade comes out as the ghoul minion is leaping onto him, uh, stuck right under the ribs, and he slides off the small blade and into the sea of pitch. Last action. Guys, this is potentially disastrous. I'm going to investigate this location. Four to four. I'm going to commit perception, Dario and Dario, <laughs> to be eight to four. Come on down. Ooh, get the clue. Flip the friggin' thing. I just have to. I have to spend three clues, and then I'll read what it says. Why? Is, why do I have so many clues? Oh, they were all on enemies. If the investigators possess at least three clues, you row farther out into deeper, darker waters. But there is still no sign of any other shore. Under the surface of the black, tarry liquid, you can see a series of glittering stars like an unknown constellation beckoning you forward. If you didn't know any better, you would think it was a reflection of the sky above, but there is no sky in this dark realm. You lean over the edge of your boat and nearly vomit from the sensation of vertigo that assaults you. It must be hundreds of miles deep and filled with horrors beyond your imagining. And yet you know what you must do. Advance the current act. Tony, you beautiful bastard. 3B under the sea of pitch. A pit of fear grows in your chest. A pitch of fear grows in your chest as you gaze into the thick, dark water. This is the source. Whatever is below the surface of this sea, it holds the answer to everything that has transpired thus far in the waking world. Perhaps you can even find a way to save your friends. Or perhaps the ocean will simply swallow you alive. You have no way of knowing for certain. You stand and take a final breath, clenching your fists tightly. And then, Tony Morgan takes a leap of faith. Resolution one! Feels good. The black, tarry liquid rises around you, consuming you, and you fear that you've made a grave mistake. The pressure of the dense liquid surrounds your body, crushing you from all sides. But then, you emerge on the other side. You fall for a brief silent moment before being caught in a glowing, sinewy web. Panicking, you scramble to a nearby platform made of solid rock. Your refuge is one of many, each suspended in the air and connected by thick webbing. Beyond that is a vast cosmic space, an infinite darkness that stretches as far as the eye can see. Can see. I agree, Crosshair. Sometimes this game really just does that to you. For each damage on the scenario reference card, record a tally mark next to steps in the bridge. Well, there's four. But there's no others, so I think that's okay. Each investigator earns Victory X. If you've played Dark Side of the Moon, go to Interlude 3. Okay, Victory X, and then how long is... No, I'm doing this next time. <laughs> I'm doing the Interlude next time. Okay, let's talk uh, experience here. Wow, what a treasure trove. Sea of Bones, Vale of Panath, Crag of Ghouls, Plain of the Ghouls, Vaults of Zin. City of Gugs, that's six. Eight enchanted woods. Nine, ten, eleven from the enemies. I can't believe how many people I killed. <laughs> people. Uh, monsters. Sorry, not, not people. Hor horrible monsters. That's a nice haul. Well, I'm definitely upgrading weapons. Uh, I'm definitely up... I don't know what else I'm going to upgrade, but we'll figure it out. Whoa. Okay. Well, I do have... A date with destiny as it were 
Uh, but I'd like to thank everybody for joining me today. I hope so, Gunner. I really do. Sometimes I get so focused on the actual gameplay of like, oh gosh, do I like move or do I do this or do I do that? Uh, Crosshair is also correct. I wonder what rogue healing looks like. I'm going to look at that. Um, I could take second wind. Anyway, um, but I do hope so, Gunner. I really do because I try my best to uh, intersperse game moments with story moments. Uh, I, frankly, I'm shocked that that happened. I remembered this scenario being very big, and I was like, Ugh. anyway, good. Well, not no worries. I hope you enjoyed. You got to think it out, and it's fun to watch. Yes, that's what I want to do. Now, I have a date with Destiny, so I'm going to go do that. Thank you all very much for joining me. Tomorrow, no Punchy Book Club, but something on RPG Clinic at 5. Probably just some fun video games. We're still sans Kate, which is too bad. But Neo Rokugan is starting soon. Right here on this channel on Tuesday at 1800, that's 6 p.m. Eastern, the Dr. Surgeon MD continues Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which I can't stop. It's fabulous. All right, thank you all so much for joining me today. This has been an excellent session of Doomed, and I'm thrilled. See y'all later. Be safe, be well. Don't venture to the Sea of Pitch unless you've got your Mouser. <laughs> what? See ya.